Good morning. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel reading comes from the gospel according to Mark. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who were contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had all she had to live on. Friends, today is Stewardship Sunday. Today's the day we focus on our giving for the coming year, and we give thanks for what is being brought in for the year to come. And I might even mention money. Wow, <laughs> not a surprise in the slightest, I know. But all joking aside, we do ourselves a disservice when we hear money when we say stewardship. As Lou, our senior warden, said last week, stewardship is using the gifts God gives us to do the work God gives us to do. Stewardship is about giving, and stewardship is about serving. And for us, stewardship has to be about faith. We have to believe that we have been given enough for us to have an extra amount to give back to God, and that when what we have is gone, there will be more to come. That takes faith. A story is told of children who had escaped the horrors of the Holocaust and the Nazi concentration camps when they were treated as far less than human beings. We can't even imagine the atrocities they saw. They had suffered so much and their trauma was so deep. In one orphanage for these kids, they had a situation. Many of the children woke in the night in terror, screaming that the nightmare they had lived was still with them. And then it bothered all the other children, too. But one of the people running the orphanage they were in came up with a simple but genius solution. They sent the children to bed with bread, a simple roll, and it made all the difference. Why? When the children awoke in the dark, not knowing where they were, they would find the roll clutched in their little hands, and they would know that they were safe and loved and that they had enough. They had gone to bed content, and tomorrow there would be enough again. The orphanage stewarded the resources so that the children's needs, physical, emotional, spiritual, were taken care of so that they could move beyond where they had been stuck after suffering so much. We are convinced by the powers that be to worry and feel like we don't have enough and that we need more and more and more we have a consumer-based economy, and we are bombarded with that message to consume, consume, consume. And that goes against the message of a God of abundance, where we have all we need, where we have no need of worry, where we have enough to share and enough to give back. Stewardship is not about money. Stewardship is hearing the call and doing something about it. The steward of a house anticipates the needs of the Lord of the manor and makes it happen with the resources that the Lord of the house provides. Now, my wife Stephanie and I enjoyed watching Downton Abbey, the PBS TV show. It wasn't everyone's cup of tea, pun intended, but we did enjoy it. And all the silliness and heartbreak, the comedy of manners and the tragedy of class differences. It was a fun show. And one of my favorite characters was Charles Branson, the butler of the house. 
he kept the downstairs, the servants' area, flowing, and he kept the upstairs meticulous. While his title was officially butler, he was actually serving as the steward of the household. Now, the definition of a butler is one who buttles, <laughs> and a butler is a manservant having charge of the wines and liquors in a manner. This is a most trusted position because of that. He kept the wine cellar and the liquor, and he held the keys to the entire household because he was so trusted. But butling was a small part of Carson's responsibilities. A steward is a person who manages the property or affairs for another entity, and Carson was much more of a studer, steward who buttled than anything else. When Carson did his job well, he knew what his Lord wanted before being told, maintaining and anticipating where the next need would be and preparing in advance the desired outcome. He showed repeatedly that spontaneous magic takes a lot of behind the scene work. Just ask the altar guild here, much the same. We come together to worship in the Lord's house and we use the Lord's resources to be of service to the Lord's desire. Even our form of worship is called liturgical, which comes from the word which literally means the work of the people. We are here to be about the Lord's business, of service to our God, singing praises, raising and educating the next generations, encouraging and strengthening ourselves for the trials of this life, deepening our discipleship to help us more closely follow Jesus, and serving and giving to our community with love and grace. It takes all of it. It's like the old act on the variety shows with the plate spinner who could never rest or slow down. He'd get one plate going and then another and then another, adjusting and correcting, maintaining on and on and on. And some days it may feel like we're just spinning plates. But we are truly stewarding this facility, our community, our very lives to the glory of God. We've been given so much and it takes work to keep it going. We steward these things because that is what we do. We are responsible and will answer one day for how we have cared for the Lord's house and the Lord's business. May we do so as well as Carson did on Downton Abbey. Today's gospel lesson is perfectly timed for the stewardship season, and I see no accident or coincidence in that. This is the right time of year to be looking ahead. We are given two pictures in the reading one of the scribes who liked to have the best and take from widows to have more. And one is a widow who gave all she had, trusting that she would, be, she would have enough and more would be on the way, which is why she could give up her two mites. This powerful witness resonates still today because we all can picture it. Now, we might feel like we don't have two pennies to rub together, but for the widow, that was true. When she dropped them in the box, she was stepping out on faith that God would provide. The Jewish name for the God who provides is Jehovah Jireh, or Yahweh Jireh. The biblical account is replete with stories of God's provision. The first I mention is where the name Jehovah Jireh comes from. Think on these. Picture Abraham with his knife raised over his son Isaac, and God provides. Don't kill your son. Here's a ram stuck in a bush. Jehovah Jireh. God provides. Like Moses leading the people into the desert daily for years, manna from heaven appeared and came down. Jehovah Jireh. God provides. Joshua in the battle of Gibeon prays for God to stop the sun and the moon from spinning so that they can continue to fight on in the daylight. Jehovah Jireh, God provides. The prophet Elijah and the widow at Zarephath, she was down to her last meal, just enough flour and oil to make a small piece of bread, but somehow her flour and oil remained feeding the prophet and her son and herself miraculously for many, many days. Jehovah Jireh, God provides. Like Jesus feeding the 5,000 with a young boy's lunch, Jehovah Jireh, God provides. Friends, if God is calling you to do something, God provides. We have to step out in faith on that. The widow did, and we're still talking about it. Her two mites, did it make much of a difference? 
to the treasurer and to the temple treasury? Probably not. But it did to her, and it does to us when we look through it with the eyes of faith. Like I started with today, stewardship is about giving, and giving takes faith. We have to see the need, and we have to choose to respond to the need. And like all good stewards, may it be said of us, well done, my good and faithful servant. We are all limited in what we can do and what we can give individually. But collectively, we can accomplish great things in the power of God and to the glory of God. And the only thing that is up to us is how we give, the attitude in which we give to the Lord. Do we give thankfully? Do we appreciate the gifts from the moment we are given another day on this beautiful earth to the moment we snuggle into a bed with a roof over our head and all the things that come in between? Are we thankful? Do we give our portion back with thanksgiving? Do we give prayerfully? Do you pray about what God is doing and how you can best serve and give to God's service? Do you pray for this place and for the gospel life we share? Please pray for me, pray for Becky, pray for our bishops and other ministers. Do you pray for the role of the Church Universal in Ashland and Hanover in our state and country and world? Do you feel connected to the greater good and the one holy Catholic and apostolic church? Yours may feel like just a drop in the ocean, just like those widow's mites. But an ocean is made up of drops. Lastly, do we give faithfully? When you give, do you do it trusting that your needs will be met? Do you get, do it believing in the God who gave you all you have to continue to be Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides? This year's stewardship theme for the diocese is broken open. And it has a beautiful logo, which is on your pledge card. And it comes from an image of, the, of Jesus at the Last Supper. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. From Matthew 26, 26. Jesus pointed to the widow's might and made a case for faith in giving. And I point to Jesus as the ultimate example of what we're talking about today. Faithful giving is what Jesus did with himself, giving up himself in loving commitment to us and to all of humanity, relying on his faith in the God he knew, the Lord he served, and the Father of himself and all of us. Jesus pointed to the elements of the Passover meal, and we remember it weekly, reminding ourselves of him and his ultimate stewardship of all that he had been given, his very body and soul. And just as Jesus blessed and broke the bread at the Last Supper, transforming the plain bread into something special, we celebrate today. Jesus continues to bless us and give us for the sake of the world in need of his love. We are broken open, not to be hurt or lessened or sacrificed, but to be transformed and multiplied and blessed. So, fellow stewards, as we bring our gifts, let us do so with joyful and thankful hearts. If you're not able to do so today, that's okay. We shape our budget and our planning for the next year ahead on the pledges that we receive. And so we ask you to pray and think on what you should give to our work here in Ashland and Hanover. We've been blessed and cared for in this time of upheaval to what has become our new normal. And the God who has been with us in the past is still with us now and will be in all that is to come. Jehovah Jireh, God provides. Thanks be to God and amen. God bless you today and God bless your giving. Bye-bye.